Hey guys, welcome back. So today I would like to show you the easiest way I know of how to make a temperature controlled fan. But not in the sense of you hit a temperature and it just runs. This can be achieved with a bimetal switch, which is uh, actually the easiest way to temperature control a fan. But what I mean, and this video is about, is a simple circuit that uses an LM317 to increase the fan speed depending on the temperature. And what you can do is set the circuit either at a certain temperature where it starts to spin the fan, or you can uh, have the fan run at a certain target temperature at maximum speed. And it's pretty simple, and here are some of the uh, possible circuits, and I will explain. So the simplest circuit is this over here. You have a voltage source from 12 to 30 volts. The actual m 317 has, I think, 37 volts maximum, but uh, 12 volts is typical fan speed. You could supply lower voltages and you would have to adjust the resistors. However, you supply voltage to the LM317 in its input pin, you have output pin, and then you need just resistor R1 and resistor R2, and we have a two pin header over here for the fan. Resistor R1 has to be uh, a one kilo ohm uh, thermistor. Um, you need an NTC thermistor, not a PTC, you need an NTC thermistor, so when it warms up, the resistance goes down. And with a 3 kilo ohm resistor R2, this circuit will start to uh, have its maximum speed at 65 degrees Celsius. The values of R1 and R2 have to be chosen depending on your application, but typically a 1 kilo ohm thermistor is totally fine, and you just adjust you just adjust, that's funny, uh, resistor R2. This is the simplest circuit. Then you can change the circuit in the way of using, instead of R2, a fixed R2, you can use um, R2 and split it into two resistors, one protection resistor, I would recommend a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and a 5 kilo ohm resistor potentiometer. And this then can be adjusted, you can adjust the 5 kilo ohms and therefore set the fan speed, either your starting point or your end point. And the third design over here is even better, the second design, uh, because here I inserted a 100 ohm resistor in series with the 1 kilo ohm thermistor. This is only needed if your temperature goes so high that your resistance R1, this adjust its uh, resistance, uh, goes below 200 ohms. Because the resistance R1, like this over here, I've got different um, numbers for all the resistors. So if this resistor goes below 200 ohms, this could cause a problem. The typical resistance of R1 is 240 ohms with plus minus 10% accuracy resistors. And uh, to protect this, if your temperature goes too high, I've inserted a 100 ohm resistor in this design. And the next designs, they are just a few um, modified designs. For example, over here, we have stabilized input and output voltage in all the different variants. And with this over here, an additional capacitor and two diodes. Diode number one is for input short circuit protection and diode number two with resist uh, with capacitor C8 or C1, C whatever. This capacitor over here, this is your output short circuit protection. And then you can just use the different variants and these are all the uh, designs you pretty much need. It's completely up to you what you need and what you want to do. But this is a pretty simple circuit and most of the time this is totally fine. However, what I have is one of these. So this is a, uh, it's just on a perf board, an LM317 with a heatsink. I've got a multi-turn potentiometer, a protection resistor, one kilo ohm. This two pin connector over here, I can connect a thermistor. These two over here, they read the resistance between the 
trim part and your ground. So when we take a look in the circuit, the overall resistance of R2 is measured by this two pin uh, resistor. Here is input, negative, positive, negative output, positive output. And the reason for this over here is when I get a thermistor, I can connect it with a two pin uh, header to the circuit. I can trim with this trim pot to either a starting or end point, then disconnect the circuit and measure the resistance through this two pin connector over here. So the resistance of these two resistors, and then I can make a fixed resistance circuit like this. Now let's build one of these circuits and take a look at the function. So the circuit is done, and I'm really sorry for the bad lighting, but my bench is currently used up by a test setup, which is also about this over here, because in my last video I showed you some thermistors. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong ones, and they were 10k thermistors, and I tested this, and it does not work with 10k thermistors. You can use 2.5k thermistors, but beyond that point, um, I wasn't able to get a good controllable circuit. However, this works and I will make another video where I show a few things which are actually the reason why this video comes so late. So now everything hopefully is connected accordingly and first I will just measure the temp the temperature right. No, I will just measure the voltage of the circuit and then a fan. Now let's see. We'll turn on the power supply and the voltage goes to 12 volts. Maybe this is better like that. Now this is at room temperature. At room temperature the fan doesn't need to spin so I have to get the resistance down. And we are at 6.3 volts. Let's turn the resistance back up to lower the voltage. Like that. So, and if I now heat up the thermistor, the voltage rises. And that's how it's supposed to be. So, here's the thing when you have this, we have a thermistor SR1, you need a NTC. And NTC means neg negative temperature coefficient. And if we take a look at the graph and we have resistance measured in, not degree Celsius, in, in ohms and have the temperature measured in degree Celsius, the curve looks something like that. We have typically at 25 degrees Celsius Celsius starting point of whatever value the thermistor has, if it's an NTC. Then in this case we have a 1K. And as the temperature rises, the resistance goes down. As the resistance, if your R2 is fixed, if your R2 is fixed, as the resistance of R1 goes down, the voltage goes up. So what you could do instead is use R1 as a fixed uh, resistor and use R2 as a PTC which means it's a positive temperature coefficient thermistor but the problem with a PTC is if we take a look at the same graph with resistance in ohms and temperature in degrees Celsius they have more like a curve that looks like that they have a 
relatively flat starting point and a relatively flat end point. Within this range over here, they are pretty much linear, but PTCs with a resistance, a high resistance, because as I said, resistance of R2 has to rise and go way beyond resistance of R1, they are a bit more rare. Either use a PTC as R2 and rise the resistance and have a fixed R1, or do the opposite, like I do over here, have an NTC of 1 kilo ohm or 2.5 kilo ohms and have a fixed R2. And here's a test setup that currently occupies my bench. And what we have here is we have an adjustable fan speed controller using LM317. Now this is the circuit where you can measure resistance R2. And this is hooked up to my main lab bench power supply and it will supply 12 volts to it. We have a thermometer over here and the uh, thermometer is directly under here which measures the temperature really close to this contraption. And this is a custom resistance thermistor. Then I have an LED over here connected with thermal paste to this piece of aluminium my second power supply over here and what I will do that is to uh, exactly figure out the resistance for a certain thermistor and this is the thermistor I was interested in uh, performance wise and doesn't really matter I will just use this now that is set we can change the multimeter here's a fan this is a 300 milliamps 12 volt DC fan and I will just connect them and it's currently spinning obviously because it's still relatively warm and if I cool it down you may hear that it starts to slow down And now it stops spinning, or almost. Now the fan is cooling the LED and this thermistor and the plate over here. I just thought about a way to show the airflow and I attached a piece of uh, paper with these cuts in it. Hopefully this uh, shows the fan speed maybe like this. So this is without the fan spinning and if I connect it you can see slight movement and now let's turn on the LED. This noise is from this power supply and I will install one of these circuits in here so it doesn't run all that fast over time. And you might be able to see that it already slightly raises, not that much, there's not a, a whole lot of fan speed right now. And there's, some, there's a problem, oh yeah, that's, yeah, more like it, that's more like it, yeah, okay. So, slight mistake, the LED wasn't thermally connected to the aluminium anymore, and that's at full speed. I have to hold it down somehow. Oh, that's hot. That's at full speed. And as it cools down, fan speed slightly goes down and more and more but the paper doesn't go down that's a bad indication but I hope it's still visible that the fan speed actually uh, changes with temperature I hope you liked this video and if you did please leave a like comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time bye